So my neighbors asked me some questions about the Bible, and I didn't feel like I knew how to answer it. Oh man, can you believe that? What a bummer. Church should really have something to deal with these kind of things. What do you mean? I'm glad you asked. Like some kind of ministry, you know, like where the church goes out and talks about the Bible and stuff. Like a friend telling Bible ministry. That way the church can do it and I don't have to do it. That's right. <laughs> Let's, Let's go, go tell, tell the pastor. pastor. Whoa! Who are you? I'm the church. Nito. No, not Nito. Did you not see my sarcastic air quotes? It says the church on your costume too. You don't see my sarcastic air quotes there too? I mean, what do you think church is? Some nameless, faceless building here to do all the things you care about, but you don't want to do yourself? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you stay right there. I'll go talk with your friends. You don't have to. Guess we could help. No, 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 no. I got this. Well, you stay right there, and I'll be friends with your friends. We'll have barbecues, bonfires, and s'mores, and long walks at the park. Because I'm the church, and I'm friendly. You better get yourselves out there and do something. I'm not even real. We don't need to cover our light at any point, right? We wanted to brighten and brighten. And how do we brighten that light? By feeding that light truth of God's word. So how does this apply to our evangelism? Something that we are called to as we are following Christ? Here are a few ideas to keep in mind as you boldly share your hope of the gospel with people. What I'm, what I'm doing is I am purposely slowing myself down. So I want to make sure that I'm communicating uh, to you guys this morning. And what a blessing it is to be up here and what a blessing it is to have the opportunity to talk about the mighty Savior, our King and Conqueror. What an amazing Amazing time. Look, there are six ways to activate your outreach, to activate uh, your evangelism in your life and in your heart. Number one is begin with prayer. Before you're doing anything, make sure that you're covering it in prayer. Why? Why cover it in prayer? Because we want to invite God into it. We want to invite the Spirit of God to lead you to lead the words that you're going to speak, to give you opportunity to speak, give you uh, the words to recall at the moment of need because we have so many needy people right in our lives and around us and in this world. Spend five minutes on the news, what happens? You can get captivated for hours. And oftentimes we get so captivated with the news that next thing you know, we're running home to get into the news to see what's happening. And then all of a sudden now we're absorbed and we're watching it five, six, seven hours a day. That's not faith. We're relying on other sources to teach us. TV to teach us. Hollywood to teach us. Instead of holiness. Right? There's an entertainment factor back in, in that right now. We go to all of these movies. We love to be entertained. But what's happening in the entertainment is that the information is getting changed. And in that change, we're beginning to believe the lies. Instead of what the truth is, history is being changed because of the original lie. If I can make you forget it, if I can make you have no identity, if I can make sure that you don't realize where you come from, then you'll continue to repeat the same mistakes over. 
Isn't that true? Number two is learn the gospel. Learn God's word. Don't be mesmerized by it. Memorize it. Get it into your heart and in your mind. Let it be a part of who you are. Let it begin to change, actually. Let it begin to change your attitude, your character. Plug in. Nothing changes a food product faster than seasoning. Right? I'm an eater. Anybody else an eater? I love food. Food's good for the body. Food here is good for the soul. But you don't, you don't make food without your seasoning. So we as Christians are called to be, like Ashley had said last week, the salt of the earth. Be worth your salt. Be worth what God has called you to. Some of you have suffered greatly in your lives. I know what that suffering looks like. I felt it. Are you worthy of the suffering? Joseph, he was worthy of the suffering. And you knew the end of his story. So he became number two in Egypt. But how, how in the world did he ever think that would have possibly occurred? But what he did was he hung on to the visions and the promise God gave him. No matter what the adversity was. But listen, he pushed it a whole lot further. So no matter what his bondages were, he was the best at what he was doing, even incarceration. He was the best. So I encourage you as well, in your suffering, be the best. Because the lesson is right around the corner. The reward from that lesson, right? Man, yeah. Listen, you use your personalities and your skill sets and your abilities and your life experiences and, and listen, marinate it together with how God has called you. So, some of you are incredibly talented. Some of you are so smart. When I'm talking to you, I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm that big. <laughs> that big. And some of you are so talented, like this big voice over here. But what a joy. And she slowed her process down as well today. Slow it down. I want to hear from God. I don't want to be this great articulate preacher. Amen. Not today. I really just want to be fully and entirely used by him. Amen? I want to slow it down. I used to be very theatrical. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to spill a little bit, but I'm trying not to. Today I'm trying to be a little bit more serious. Call it my mature moment. Uh -huh. But look, use, use what God's given you. Homes, vehicles, clothes, resources. Man, when Watutu, did I say that right? Watoto? What amazing people. Look, being in the same car with them, I was unworthy. Right, Sal? Unworthy. Their humility and their love and their transparency, it was ridiculous. Pete, you should have seen it. It was crazy. I was, it was amazing. Touched forever, profoundly. But I'm not going to let this time fall to the wayside. Right, Lewis? I'm not going to let anything go anymore. Someone else will do it. Someone else will talk to that person. Someone else has the, the giftings or the finances. 
I'll just let somebody else do it. God will let me go. Kind of hurts. How many times has God given you an idea, a cool idea, and you hung on to it, put it in your pocket, and year after year after year, and then one day, you're whatever, you're driving, and you see your idea walk right by you. <laughs> you're like, hey, that was mine. Right? Like, can you relate? I can relate. But we let it go. Everything has a little bit of a time period because, see, if you're going to let it go, God will find somebody else he can use. Who do I send? Our hands ought to be, send me, God. Right, Nicole? Send me, God. I want to be a part of that. Give me more ideas, God. Trust me. Number three. Listen and ask. That means when you're talking to people, make sure that you have an agenda. That agenda doesn't need to be you. The agenda needs to be that person. So two ears, one mouth. Listen double time. Respond singularly, right? Look, captivate. Stop what you're thinking. Take a minute and listen to somebody when they're telling you, this is what I'm going through. So that you can recall it the next time you see them. Right, Heidi? Mm -hmm. Because it personalizes it. It also makes them feel like you care. Because some people... Don't have anybody to care for them. That's why God has brought us in this body. So that we can really love and care for people. To show what a family unit really looks like. Look, you're not going to be there all the time. One person isn't. But a hundred? Oh yeah. You're going to be there. One of us. Listen to what's happening in their lives. Make sure that when you're answering them, that you're prayerfully thinking about the answer. There's no such answer as I don't know. It's I can find somebody who does. Right? I can find somebody who's going to answer that. I can find you some help. And we lovingly pass them forward to somebody. We don't let people go. We hold on to them as tight as we can. Amen? Amen. Let's go to my fourth point. I only have two more points, but I'm, I'm doing pretty decent on my time. So again, listen and understand. Number five is tell stories. Tell your story. Do you know your story? Here's the other question. Have you practiced it? Have you written it down? Have you chiseled away at it? What I mean is this, is listen, your testimony, by the time it's done, should look like Jesus. Chip away everything that's not him. So that when you're speaking and you're communicating and you're loving people, they're, they're listen, people can see a fraud in a minute. Can you? I can see a fraud in a minute. You're talking to them and their eyes are over here. <laughs> You're talking to them, well, what do you think? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. No. So I train the mind to think and watch. Pray as you're listening and then as you're speaking out your testimony. Make sure it's the gratification of the kingdom. Not all your highlights. I got 25,000 trophies. I'm this, I'm that, I'm all of this. No, God got me there. He used this in this situation. He took me out of this thing here. He rescued me. He glorified my life. He picked me up from death. And I'm alive today because of his glory. Hallelujah. I want you to know who Jesus is through my life. 
Not because of my life, but it was because of Jesus Christ's life that I want you to be saved, released, and free. And who knows, at that moment, your life may uh, be identical to that person's life. And you can show that person, look, there is freedom. There is liberty. Apply the word of God. Receive him today. Oftentimes we think we're unqualified. Anyone in here who knows Jesus, you don't have to raise your hand. I tell you right now, I debitize you. You're qualified. Share Jesus with that person. Take an opportunity at that moment to call them into the greater light of Jesus Christ. Because if you don't, there could be a possibility that may be the last time you have an opportunity to do that. Because we don't know what God's plan is for them. We, we're not sure if God's ready to take them. But God created a divine appointment, bam, just for you and me. So that we could speak into that person's life to give them that last minute who, who might be that, that person on the right-hand side of the cross of Jesus Christ that day when they hung our Savior. And Jesus said, hey, I'm going to remember you. Wow. At the last minute of that person's life, you may have a footprint in their life. You are good. I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, my final point is be patient. Leaving the results to God. Star, do you mind coming up and uh, playing? Remember that God is the one who will produce the results. Thank you. Your job is to faithfully share the truth so that they can trust in him with the outcome. Even if you don't see the immediate decision for Christ or uh, that they make to follow him, God still will use that moment to communicate the truth of the gospel. And you planted the seed. Here it's more important, this is more important, that you obeyed, you obeyed. And when that person is in heaven, and they ask the question, well, no one told me about you. And God replays it for them. And that was you. That was us who kindly and lovingly handed that seed of forgiveness, that seed to everlasting life, that seed of overcoming you and I have an opportunity every day when we wake up and put our feet on that floor to tell somebody about the saving, awesome grace of Jesus Christ. Amen? Reach out. Be bold. Jesus is awesome. Amen? Well, I want to um, just invite anyone here. I see a lot of awesome new faces. And I want to give you an opportunity. So if everybody would just close your eyes, bow your head for me. And we just want to ask God, if there's somebody out there who does not know this awesome Savior, the King of the universe, He who creates in the speed of creation, this is your moment. And you don't have to be embarrassed because everybody's giving you the privacy. If that's you and you know in your heart God's pulling you, don't deny it. Number one, just put up your hand so I can see you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we ask you today, God, to come into our hearts. Father, we believe right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you died for our sins. And Lord, that you are 
died and buried and rose again and are now seated at the right hand of the Father. And Lord, you are in our hearts right now. We invite you in the name of Jesus to be in our hearts, to live, Lord, to clean out all the junk, God, and renew us for every day forward. Father, we submit our lives to you and we thank you, God, for being our Savior. If you agree, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah.